Hello, it's nice to have you with us on the news from Vox Africa TV London. I am Aditukumbo Akintayo. Senegal's President Abdoulaye Ward won 34.8% of the vote in the presidential election, falling short of the absolute majority needed to avoid a runoff, according to the first official results released on Wednesday. The President of the Appeals Court, Demba Kanji, read out the results. Mustafa Niasse had 13.2%. Macky Sall, 26.57%, Idris Sek, 7.86%, and Abdullahi Ward, 34.82%. The result, which must be confirmed by Senegal's top legal body, means he will face former ally Macky Sall, who came second in the runoff. The second round is due three weeks after the results are finalized. To North Africa, Egypt's presidential election will be held over two days, starting May 23. The state election committee said on Wednesday, as the country's military rulers prepare to hand power to civilians after last year's overthrow of Hoshni Mubarak. The committee's head, Farouk Sultan, told reporters a runoff between the top two contenders will take place on June 16 and 17 if no candidate wins outright in the first round and final results will be released on June 21. Let's take you to South Africa. Clashes erupted outside Julius Malema's home in Shechego Township on Wednesday night and early Thursday morning following news of the party rebels' expulsion from the ruling party, ANC. Malema opponents carried a tombstone made out of cardboard box with the words Dictator, R.I.P. Julius and Corrupt written on it, celebrating the youth leader's expulsion by singing the words The End of the Dictator in Sepedi and English. Malema supporters had gathered outside his house from around midday in anticipation of the announcement by the ANC's National Disciplinary Committee on his political future. The two groups taunted and threw stones at each other. And Malema later came out to address his supporters. I'm not shocked or disappointed is because what they are telling us now is what I've been expecting. I will die for what I believe in. I've not done anything wrong. Never. I did not steal from anybody. Never. I did not kill anybody. I spoke on behalf of the ANC Youth League. Yes. And I'm persecuted for speaking on behalf of the ANC Youth League. Yes. And I'm not prepared to sell out the positions of the ANC Youth League. Under any circumstances, And back to elections here in the UK, the Labour mayoral election for London will be taking place in May. And our George Tarr was at the African Support Group seminar that was held over the weekend. Over to George. We're here in East London where the Africans for Labour are organising a fundraising dinner tonight. This is in support of uh, the Labour's party candidate for the Mayor of London, Ken Livingston, whom I'll be speaking to a little later. The crowd gathered in welcoming Ken Livingston here in the typical traditional African processions accompanied by African elders and traditional leaders living in London. Ken Livingston arrived here with one aim only. That is to reiterate his commitment to all Londoners and to talk of his links with Africans in London. When Ken was first in power, we saw the support that he gave to small businesses. We saw the support that he gave to voluntary organizations uh, that do quite a good work in, in, in communities. Most of these organizations are run by um, Africans and people of uh, minority background. But you, you find that Today that they are faced with 15 pages, 20 pages application forms in a small charity of one or two people. They just can't cope. So uh, Boris has used that as an excuse to, to cut all the funding to this group. And, and we think that Ken coming back to power will start uh, throwing at least some light towards uh, uh, reinstating the status quo before uh, Boris Johnson. As the guest speaker at this event, the Labour candidate for Mayor of London, Ken Livingston, used the opportunity to speak to this crowd and make his key pledge, which is to reduce fares for all Londoners. This event is very significant to us within the Labour Party and for us as Africans. It is very important for us to get Ken back to City Hall. Ken is somebody who's been at City Hall in the past and he, he really listened 
to issues, to concerns of Africans. So this is why it's important. This is why we're galvanizing Africans, not just to vote for Ken, but to raise funds to empower his campaign in getting him elected come May. African votes is the largest single ethnic minority elected in London. And it will be vital for this campaign. Fortunately, Ken has a record second to none in defending black people, and I believe Africans will come out and vote for him. Another East London weight behind Ken Livingston's campaign present at the event was Mac Helia MP, who is also chair of the All Party Group for Nigeria. Despite the enthusiasms and very enticing speeches, encouraging participants to come out and canvas door to door and vote for Ken Livingston, some of the participants here were not quite decided awaiting Mr. Livingston's speech. The position is still in doubt, but hopefully I'll try to to make a decision following his uh, proposals tonight. When the main man finally took center stage, speaking to the 300 odd London Africans voters gathered here, Ken Livingston gave a download of his work within the Hackney Borough and why it represents the real diversity of London. I caught up with Mr. Livingston at the event to find out how important is the African vote in these elections. The African vote has become very large, had a huge influx of people from all different parts of Africa into London. Many came originally as refugees, many now come as entrepreneurs, building business links, and the African community has become a solid and dynamic part of the London economy. So we want to build those links. And I think as well, after many decades of Africa not achieving its potential because of civil wars, destabilization, Africa's starting to come together. Some of us hoped back in the 1960s we would see a United States of Africa. And I think we're starting to see now Africa coming together as one voice. And it should be a world power up there with India and China. What would you say some people thinking, well, this is just um, every little help. Can live this issue win? All right, every little does help. This is a very tight election. Boris Johnson remains about the only Conservative in Britain who's still got a positive popularity rating. And so the African vote could actually determine the outcome of the election. As a campaign for who will become next mayor of London intensify, and as the polls suggest this week, Boris Johnson, the incumbent, and Ken Livingston are quite close in point. Now, Ken Livingston has come here this evening to ask for Africans to vote. Whether the African vote will determine the outcome of the next mayor, who will become the next mayor of London, we are here to find out. Thank you, George. And let's move away from politics and talk piracy in West Africa. African Navy personnel, along with European and American forces, took part in a four-day joint military exercise at sea to exchange ideas on how they can better curb rampant piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. Navy officers and naval warships from U.S., Spain, Nigeria, Togo, Cameroon, Gabon and Ghana took part in the exercise codenamed Obangame to help strengthen regional capacities in combating pirates at sea. Nigerian officials said there had been an increase in the number of attacks by pirates on ships in the Gulf of Guinea waters. On Wednesday, pirates opened fire on a Dutch cargo ship a few miles from Nigeria's Port Harcourt, kidnapping the ship's master and an engineer and stealing cash. And Vice Admiral Ola Saad Ibrahim, Nigeria's Navy Chief of Staff, said most of the piracy was carried out by citizens of the countries bordering the Gulf of Guinea and that a joint exercise will be used to educate and warn likely offenders. These are citizens that are involved in piracy more or less. If you see the coverage of Africa, uh, you can always conclude like that. Uh, first, we want to use a lot of uh, publicity to educate them about the consequences of the kind of recklessness they bring about in our water. But then, when persuasion fails, the military deploys. What we're working on here is synergy and uh, not just piracy, but all illicit activities at sea. So the skills and the, uh, the skills and techniques and uh, practices that we're doing here can be used to uh, enforce all laws and, uh, and manage all illicit activities at sea in the maritime environments. 
Passengers disembarked in from a stranded cruise ship on Thursday told of the difficult conditions on board after three days at sea without power. The Costa Alegre arrived at the capital of the Seychelles on Thursday with more than a thousand people on board. The cruise liner had to be towed towards the port in Victoria after suffering an engine room fire which knocked out the ship's main power supply on Monday. Ship owner Costa Cruises said 376 passengers out of 627 had accepted his offer to continue their holiday in the Seychelles, where a carnival kicks off on Friday at a firm's expense of other passengers who fly home. And Joe Morgan is the Seychelles Minister of Transport, Energy and Environment. Where well, there has been a lot of discomfort uh, by the passengers on board the, the vessel for the last uh, two to three days, and now they have safely do docked into Port Victoria under military escort all the way from where they were stricken, uh, together with uh, escort from the Port Authority as well and air cover. I think the passengers will feel a sense of relief for being able to go offshore, come ashore, go to a hotel, um, have a shower, relax, eat, have something hot to eat, and basically get over this ordeal. And we end the news on a very sad note. The police officer shot and blinded by gunman Raoul Mode has been found dead at his house in Northumberland. The body of 44-year-old David Rathband was found by police at his home in Blythe on Wednesday night after officers received a report of concern for his welfare. Police said no one else was being sought in connection with their death. Well, that's all we have time for on the Vox News. I'll be back shortly for an update. Don't forget to log on to our website, voxafrica.co.uk, for more news and programs online. From me, it's goodbye for now.